even that pales in comparison to the fact that intergenerational poverty is largely a function at this point in American life of individual choice. There's Ben Shapiro regurgitating the same pick yourself up by the bootstraps argument that we've been hearing from the conservative party. And he is chiming in with his thoughts on why there's this wealth gap among white Americans and black Americans. And here's what he has to say. The entire debacle is simply designed to suggest that anyone who seriously asks questions that are very serious about how exactly you would do something like this, that those people are inherently racist. And that if you suggest that the disparities between black and white wealth in America are not wholly due to the legacy of slavery, which they are not, okay, they are not. They're in part due to the legacy of Jim Crow. They're in part due to the legacy of slavery. Jim Crow more than slavery simply is a time factor because Jim Crow is a lot more recent. People who are still alive experienced Jim Crow, many of them. But even that pales in comparison to the fact that intergenerational poverty is largely a function at this point in American life of individual choice. 17, 18 year old people who are making poor decisions to impregnate women and then leave or commit crimes. How that is a legacy of Jim Crow or slavery as opposed to Today, people born in the year 2000 and beyond, people committing crimes, how that is supposed to be recompensed by a Jewish immigrant who arrived in 1910. How that's a, how you even work this is, is how do you justify something like that? So he's specifically referring to this debate that's occurring in regard to reparations for descendants of slaves. And what I always find so interesting about Shapiro, but particularly Shapiro's supporters, is that they constantly talk about how, no, 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 he's a common sense guy. I mean, he's he's fact-based, he's evidence-based, but he just accused, you know, the vast majority of black people in America of impregnating women and then leaving, right? Of being uh, druggies, of uh, not taking personal responsibility. I mean, did he provide any statistics, any evidence of that? Or did he just merely talk about his feelings? Because there were, there were a lot of feelings there, but there certainly wasn't any evidence. So I like evidence and I wanna break it down. So let me give you just a little bit and then Jake, I want you to jump in. So first, let's go to graphic 39. The racial wealth gap exists even among blacks who are highly educated and come from two parent homes. Black families with graduate or professional degrees have $200,000 less in wealth than similarly educated whites. Black or Latino college graduates don't have as much wealth as white high school dropouts. Similarly, two parent black households have less wealth than single parent white households. These are the facts, okay? The facts don't care about your feelings and the facts certainly don't care about your antagonism toward the black community and what they're facing in America. Yeah, so uh, there's a couple of issues here, uh, number one, uh, on this issue of how do we get to this disparate wealth uh, to begin with? Well, I'm glad that he at least acknowledged slavery in Jim Crow, and uh, Jim Crow will last all the way into the 1960s, which is fairly recent. People are still alive, as he pointed out. But it, it also went past Jim Crow. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that it was uh, done in America, and it was the government that made these choices. So, for example, in 1935, when we're still in the Jim Crow era, but for the whole country, the Social Security Act excluded farm workers and domestic workers. So when it did that, unfortunately at that point, because of the, the hold that black folks in this country started in, for in the first place after uh, slavery was finally over in 1865, they then had two thirds of them working in, as farm workers and domestic uh, workers. So in that case, they did not get to accumulate wealth that all, the, all other Americans got to accumulate through social security. They were denied uh, opportunities to buy houses, not just in the south, but in the north. And two thirds of the wealth that we have in this country is in our houses. So redlining is a fact and, and, and even the government prevented African Americans from getting loans for their houses. So all these things led to a situation where now African Americans have about 7% of the wealth on average as households as, as white Americans do. 
Now, I just wanna relate it to you guys, right? Because I assume that if you're watching this, whether you're liberal, conservative, it doesn't matter, right? That you're not a billionaire and you're probably not a multimillionaire. If you are, congratulations, and I'm sure that you just did that completely on your own, right? Your parents were not multimillionaires, you just rose up out of nowhere and became one. In which case, wonderful, I'm proud of you, okay? But if you're poor or middle class, Ben Shapiro just told you it's your fault. That's exactly, yeah. That's exactly right. And, and not just if you're black or Latino, if you're white. Yes. He's saying it doesn't matter what you where you started. It doesn't matter that your family didn't have money. So I just explained to you why African Americans in this country have families that did not were not allowed to accumulate wealth. So they start with a huge disadvantage. If you're a poor or middle class and you're white, can you not see how you started at a disadvantage? It doesn't mean that you can't make it. It doesn't mean that there aren't exceptional people who get beyond that. My dad was incredibly poor farmer in southeastern Turkey and he got past it. I remember Ben Mankos on this show a long time ago saying, when when I was more conservative and we were having a debate about it, he said, Cenk, did you ever think that maybe not everybody's like your dad, that maybe your dad's exceptional? I know, but it's not just about being exceptional, Cenk. There are a ton of exceptional people out there who can't catch a break. Think about the support system surrounding your dad, especially in the time where he immigrated to America. He had white Americans take him into their home and right. support him. We live in a different America today. 100% right, when my dad immigrated here in the 1960s, America was wonderful and open to him. So Uncle Bob and all the other different white folks in this country helped him over and over again and gave him that support system. Unfortunately for African Americans in this country, that didn't happen. And so it doesn't mean that it didn't happen for Anybody, but it happened less. As our viewer Gabby Marita just tweeted in about the Tucker Carlson story, just because one African American made it through the obstacle course doesn't mean there isn't an obstacle course. And if your poor middle class is white, you know that, you know that, you do. You, you weren't, you were born into that situation. It doesn't mean you can't make it out, but it's also not your quote unquote fault. And Shapiro, like with his furrowed eyebrows, it's like, oh, you know, it's they, you know, they, they should take responsibility for what they're doing, and it, it's it, intergenerational poverty is their fault. Well, that means it's also your fault. It's just, yeah, look, it's just, it, it's such a tired talking point to turn to these, um, you know, just like slanderous claims about people living in poverty. Because the fact of the matter is, it's not just blacks in America, although, you know, they disproportionately have less wealth than white Americans. There are a lot of white Americans, as you mentioned, Jake, who are living in poverty right now. So what are we gonna do? We're just gonna slander them all as people who are doing drugs and they're lazy and they don't wanna do any work? No, a lot of them are working full time jobs and they're getting paid starvation wages at the company that they're at. Right, I mean, if you're working a minimum wage, a federal minimum wage job, right? And I'm talking about not a federal job, but you're getting the federal minimum wage for your job. You are not making enough money to afford rent in a two bedroom apartment anywhere in the country, anywhere. Okay, that is that is unbelievable. 40% of Americans would not be able to afford a $400 emergency. Do you think it's because they're out there spending willy nilly and wasting their money? No, they're not making enough to afford providing for themselves and their families. You know, like the, it's just so annoying to constantly hear this talking point when the problem is not people of color. The problem is not those who need government aid, right? The problem is that people are not given the same opportunities that they used to be given back in the day in this country. That's exactly right, and progressives are fighting for higher wages for everybody and for you to be able to live the American dream. That's why they believe in college for all, etc. Now, the last thing is that these government programs that made these decisions, and I thought right wingers were against big government, right? Uh, but what they don't acknowledge is how big government rigged things in their favor and against a lot of other Americans throughout this country. It's not just from the 1860s or the 1960s, look at what's happening today. So what the government recently did was they set aside $400 billion to encourage in tax subsidies to encourage uh, savings. But wait a minute, most of the savings are in the hands of the people that already have money. So of that, 50% of the tax subsidies went to the top 5%. Uh, the next 15% got 46% of the benefits. The next 60% got only 4% of the benefits. The bottom 20% got zero benefits. Mm -hmm. The Trump tax cuts, if you're uh, making $25,000 or less, you got 40 bucks. By the way, some of the middle class w was even worse shape. Some of the middle class are paying more taxes now if they live in blue states, okay? But 
If you're in the top 0.1% and you make $3.4 million annually, the Trump tax break for you per year was $940,000. Government action matters, whether we're trying to help the poor or the middle class have opportunity as progressives want, or we have the current system that conservatives favor, which is keep giving more and more government handouts to the richest people in the country. Give 40 bucks to the poorest people, give nearly a million dollars a year extra to the richest people in the country. That's what Ben Shapiro is in favor of. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com app.